all the while, you know, I would always think about my dad sometimes. You know, man, why did he do that? And sometimes I, it'll mess my head up where I got to the point where I wanted to kill myself. Well, uh, first of all, you know, uh, my father, he actually wasn't there at the time when I was growing up because my father actually hung himself. You know, he took his life away. And uh, the story is, when I was young, you know, me, my mom, my dad, my brother, and my sisters, we, we were staying in an apartment at the time. And uh, my, mo my mother woke me up and told me, you know, to go get some milk for my sister because she was crying. So I was think I was like five or six, you know. Uh, I got off the bed and I went to the kitchen to get some milk. And there was my father hanging. And like, I knew something wasn't right because he's like, he, I knew, I, I knew that someone right. Even though I was small, I knew at the time. So like, I go back to uh, to my mother and I wake her up and I tell her, hey, uh, can you go in the kitchen and check on dad? Because I mean, I think he's doing something he's supposed to be doing. <laughs> Cause I was little, you know? Yeah. And uh, so my mom wakes up and she goes to the kitchen and she drops on the floor and and my dad actually hung himself, and I was the one to witness that. So I can't really explain, you know, about my dad if he was there, you know, because, like I said, he took his life when I was young. So my mom, after that happened, my mom went crazy. She started using drugs. You know, that's all she did for was my father because she loved him so much, and she started using drugs. Uh, did you ever hear any hear? Excuse me. Did you ever hear stories after that as to why? Well, what speculation was on why he why he hung himself? Well, uh, my aunts and and you know my my dad's sister, my aunt Marie, she used to tell me you know he was you know he would always stress a lot. He was depressed about his brother that he my uncle his brother he died, and my uh, my dad took that real deep, real hard, and he couldn't cope with the pain. So I guess he felt that the only way to you know take away the pain was to just kill himself and do that. But, you know, I hope that before he did that, he seen the light. It's actually like last night I was in my bunk and uh, I was just, it's crazy because how we're talking about him today. Last night I was thinking about him and I've never actually just thought, you know, sat down and thought about my dad, why he do that, you know. And uh, I just hope that before, sometimes I tell myself, why did he do that? Why did he kill himself and left me and my mom like this? So as I got older, uh, my mom was in and out of prison, so uh, she didn't want CPS to take us. So she left us with my grandma, and my grandma raised us. And, you know, she fed us, kept clean clothes on us, nice shoes. You know, she did her best. But, you know, like, as my father being around, I can't say much about him. Okay, so tell me how growing up without a father, how'd that shape your life? Oh, uh, well, actually, uh... Growing up without my father, like I said, my grandma raised us. And when that happened to my father, him killing himself, my mom went crazy in and out of prison. So my grandma took care of us because she didn't want the CPS to take us. So I started growing up, you know, as I'm getting older, going to school, my grandma taking us to school every day. Uh, like one of the guys mentioned, uh, we, see, we used to see people with nice shoes and clothes and stuff like that. And we were clean at the time. My grandma's kept us clean. and. But we didn't just have like the Jordans and stuff like that. We had like cheap shoes, pro wings and stuff like that. So as I got older, I live in the neighborhood where I'm from, Second Ward. Uh, we would go to this park called Ripley House. And when me and my brothers would go to this park, we'll walk to the park. We're like 13, 14. We would see these dudes hanging around smoking weed. So when we would go that way, they would stop us. Hey, come over here. So we would stop. And we started smoking weed, and they used to tell me, look, before you go home, we're going to give you some Listerine to wash your mouth up and some clear eyes. So every day, you know, these dudes lived on the next block. They were older cats, you know. I was like 14. They were like 20, 21, you know. I looked up to these dudes because my father wasn't around. So we would go over there every day and get high, and they would give me Listerine, and I would come back. Me and my, my cousins and my brother would come back to the house, and we'll go straight to the kitchen and eat up, eat up everything. And my uncle, one day, he was like, man, y'all eating too fast. Y'all y'all high, y'all got the munchies and stuff like that. So as I grew up, you know, uh, we would hang, I would hang around with these dudes. 
come to find out these dudes were in gangs and you know they wanted me to join gangs at a young age had me do you know stupid stuff and like they'll use me as a crash dummy but i never they never send me and my brothers and my cousins like on missions to do stuff we, they just liked it, us to hang around you know i guess they wanted us to grow older and be like them so we could get the youngsters so it can just generate you know the gang stuff but growing up in my neighborhood um i never joined a gang and you know for my father not being there i guess that's why i did my own thing i started selling drugs you know me and my cousin and my brother because my grandma raised my cousins which is my aunt's kids because she was in and out of prison as well so we used to see people with nice cars and rims and and money jewelry and that was that's what we used to watch gangster movies and we used to see stuff like that like the good fellas and we were like man i want to be like that or i want these women cadillacs and stuff like that so growing older we would you know we used to buy weed bag it up and sell it you know and the profit we would smoke get high and growing older my my whole thing was i thought this life was about getting money so man we we would save money and the whole as i got older i started selling just more than weed it started to lead to pills crack coke and i started getting into women girls i had a bunch of girlfriends you know and i would just be cheat i had i had one girl and then by the time i know i used to go to school and i have by the time i come home i got like five or six numbers and i would talk to all of them and one day i was 15 minutes here 15 minutes there and i grew up like i thought like a little player selling drugs thought it was cool you know but my dad wasn't there to t to tell me that wasn't the right thing, and you know, I, my grandma, she uh she actually uh wasn't mad at the situation about me selling drugs, you know, she she she, she I don't say she was like she didn't care, but she cared. She just said if y'all what if y'all do, hope y'all don't get caught, you know, and come home before it gets dark. So we would hit the streets, sell drugs, do what we got to do, mess with women, and come home before. Or I used to call and let her know, well, I'll spend the night at a friend's house. You know, I'm not going to be there tomorrow. Or, you know, stuff like that. As I got older, and like I said, my whole thing growing up in life was getting money or having money, having nice things. Because my other, my friends, the people I grew up with, had nice things. And I was like, man, everybody's got this. And that's that's what's going on. That's the style these days, you know, is to wear Jordans and nice fitted hats and stuff like that. So I was like, man, I ain't gonna be like this no more. W w one way or another, I'm gonna get money and I'm gonna show them that, hey, I can get this too, you know, without y'all. And as I got older, my friends and, you know, started betraying me, you know, and I started being by myself a lot. I, everything I did was I did by myself. Whether going out to eat, I treated myself. I'd sit at the restaurant, eat by myself, have margaritas and you know, and but I always always have money, and I would always thought I was some kind of mobster or something. <laughs> Watching these movies, it was, it was it was in my head. And uh, as I got older, I started coming to places like this. I came my first time actually seventeen. You know, I caught a theft case, and uh, I took this dude's chain, and I ran. And I came when I was seventeen, got out eighteen, and uh, the second time was which was last uh, last year. I got out oh ten, but I say this to, as I was growing up, uh, I met, you know, my wife that I'm with now, and, you know, that was the most beautiful thing that happened to meeting her, because she's been down with me ever since I've been getting locked up, you know. She could have easily just left, but she's still holding on because I know she has faith in me. And now I have a beautiful son, a beautiful daughter, and God, I have accepted Christ into my life. I realize as me going through my bad lifestyle that if I don't change now, it's going to get worse. Or, you know, because like I said, my mom was in and out of prison. My dad killed himself and we was living at my grandma's house. My brothers and sisters would look up to me, you know, and I, I started seeing them. My little sister started trying to steal my weed and try to sell my weed to get money. And and my brothers and all that. And I actually grew up like in a drug kind of family because every, my uncles and them, they're also drugs. They are They always had nice cars pinky rings, stuff like that, and I grew up seeing that. My uncles would come and, you know, and I would be like, man, I want to be like my uncle. I want to have nice things, and but all the while, you know, I would always think about my dad sometimes. You know, man, why did he do that? And sometimes I, it will mess my head up where I got to the point where I wanted to kill myself. But I said, nah, you know what? God didn't create me to do stuff like this. You know, there's 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 got to be something better. You know, if if that was the case, then why are we living?
this guy, you know, God kid himself, hung on the cross for me. I, I feel like I have to repay him back. And, you know, m my wife is, she kind of don't believe me that I'm changing, but I told her, man, you need to quit letting the devil put stuff in your head. You know, God, I mean, can turn evil to good. And I plan on taking my tattoos off my face. You know, uh, I have joined a faith-based program. And, you know, I'm, I'm walking with God. I try to be obedient in every way because I don't want to have my blessings cut off. You know, I pray for my wife to maybe, because my wife believes in Jesus Christ, but she's not actually like deep in the word like I am. So when I write her letters, I, I write scriptures to her. And when she comes to visit me up here, she, you know, she's like, man, you know what? I really, uh, you know, I like what you sent me. And my son, like I said, this is like my second time I put my wife through this. Like when I was here last year, I stayed out like a couple months and I came back. But when I was here last year, I would always write her and tell her, you know, that I'm coming home changed. And I would get out and stay out for like, I would do good for a couple of months, go to Bible study, church, and do good, don't drink, smoke weed, or pop pills. I would do that. I would do good for like a couple of months, but then I would just slowly, surely go to my old ways. I would smoke a cigarette. My wife used to tell me, man, I thought you were not going to do nothing. You wrote all these letters talking about you're going to be changed. And, and I was like, man, it's going to be all right. You know, I can still, I was going to church and then still getting high at the same time, thinking it was all right. I would, I would tell myself, you know what, well, at least if I go to church, you know, God will see me as I'm trying. But I used to go to church with weed in my pocket sometimes. I'm not even going to lie. I used to go to church, <laughs> God forgive me, <laughs> go to church and come home and get high. My wife was like, you can't be doing that. Now that I think about it, I mean, I, that wasn't the right thing, but I wasn't fully mature and, uh, as living in the spiritual life. Now I'm getting older, uh, I realize, you know, I have to change my life. I have to, and the tattoos on my face represents the, symbolizes the the way of living, my old way of living, the thug life, getting tattoos and stuff like that. But now I have accepted Christ into my life and I'm taking that off because my son, I don't want my son growing up thinking he can do that. And like I tell him at visit when they come see me, you know, I'm, I don't want you to be like me. I actually want you to be better than me. And these tattoos are coming off and he's like, you better take them tattoos off. And you know, uh, just, you know. Let me ask you a question. With me personally, I remember because my dad wasn't around, I didn't have that man walking alongside me to say, no, boy, you don't need to be doing that. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do this. You're doing a good job. I'm proud of you. I love you. All the stuff that we need as a, as a young man. Because I didn't have that, I bought into everything this world tells you you need to be as a man. Success, money, power, the great position, the fancy car, the nice house, all that. It is... Tell me a little bit about that. Is that the same thing you bought into? How did well, it work? Well, I was just like you mentioned, uh, man, I, I, I had the same mentality, you know, power and women. I thought that was all being part of a man. But now that God has opened my eyes, you know, that was just being foolish. You know, now it's not about the women, the fancy car. It's about loving one another and, you know, uh, taking care of my wife and my two kids because, you know, my my wife, you know, she needs me out there. And it's hard right now, me being away, you know, she's got to change the pampers and the kids running around the grocery store. And she's got one, she's got to go look for the other one, the other aisle, stuff like that. But, you know, I, I guess that's why I grew up like this. I think if my dad was around, I don't think I'll be here today, actually, to tell you the truth. How do you think your life would be different now? I'll probably be, because my dad, uh, before he passed away, my mom used to tell me he was real great at basketball, that he almost had a scholarship to go to basketball, to go to U of H, to college. And he was real good. My dad was like 6'1", you know, had a lot of women. and But my mom still loved him. But, you know, he was real good at basketball. And I know, I myself know how to play basketball real good. But I think if he was here today, I wouldn't be living the lifestyle that I live, you know. He would probably push me to more to stay in school and 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 to play basketball and go to college and play, you know, to make it to the NBA, because I do know how to play real well. What do you wish your dad would have done differently? I know it's a little different because right. of what happened. Well, I wish he would have never did what he did. And like I said, uh, you know, it, I don't think about it, but when I do think about my dad killing himself, and like I said, I, I, I walked in on him and he was just hanging. And I was like, what the hell, you know, uh, something ain't right. But, you know, I try not to think about it because when I think about it, I go to like a deep trance. I'm like, you know, I start daydreaming, so I just got to wake up sometime. But 
you know, when I think about it, you know, I'm like, you know what, I have a son now. I'm not going to be like that, you know. I'm not, I, I can be, I still have a chance. I got six months left, so I still have a chance to tell my son and teach him how to be a man, but the right way, how to, you know, be a man of God, actually, not just no regular man, be a man of God, because it's different from just being a man and a man of God. I want him to live in the spirit, you know. That's good, dude. Um, there's one thing you can say to your dad right now. If he was alive, what would you say? I would tell him, uh, first I would tell him I love him. And I would really, I, I know I would be happy because, you know, he would probably be playing basketball or I would probably be playing basketball, but I would just tell him thank you for being a good father. You know, even though he wasn't around, but I would tell him that. that he's right. right. But how do you think the fact that you grew up without a father, how did that shape and mold you as a husband? Oh, man. My because you didn't see that. Right. But I didn't see that. But God has, has been teaching me, you know what? Uh, you don't want to be like that. You know, you, you want to be better. And now, I mean... My wife loves me, we love each other, and I'm actually a good father. When I was out there before I caught this case, I would work, you know, take my kids out to eat, and, and you know, and man, I'm a real good father. My kids love me, and I don't just throw them to the side and stuff like that. And when I look at my dad, I'm like, you know, I'm not gonna be like that. That made me stronger because I tell myself, well, I'm not gonna do my son like that. Even though he did that to me, I'm not gonna do that to my son. You know, I'm gonna raise him the right way, and and that just makes me stronger, and that just, when I look at my son, I think about, you know, what my dad did to me, I'm not gonna do it to him. And I'm gonna I'm give him my all. And I learned another thing that it's not about me no more. Cause I actually, I mean, like, I took care of my kids and my daughter and my wife, but I, I was selfish in certain ways, you know? And my wife was like, you know, you're selfish in some ways, you know? But now I realize since I accepted God in my life, I plan on having my own business, taking my tattoos off because I know with God, all things possible. And, you know, this time I know I got it. This is it, because I'm tired of you know hurting my kids. I'm tired of seeing them come to visit and getting searched. You know I look at them; they gotta get searched. My boy's six years old. My daughter's one. They gotta get searched. Stuff like that just motivates me to stop coming and stop putting them in a situation, a predicament like this. So, what's the best thing about being a father? Best thing about being a father is is I have give I have uh, best thing about being a father is is I have brought children in this world, I have given them life, you know, I've given them life, and now I just gotta make it better for them. And they're beautiful children, I mean, all children are beautiful, actually. But I give God all the honor and glory for, for changing me to, for who I am today. Uh, people look at me, think I'm a bad person because my tattoos, and I'm, but uh, if they get to know me, I got a good heart, I actually, you know, uh, I got God in me, so you can't be like I can't be like I used to be no more. Like I'm, I'm some kind of thug. I can't be like that. But people look at me like that. But I'm, like I said, I'm taking my tattoos off, planning to go to work. Uh, I want to start my own power washing business, you know. And then when I die, I can leave it to my son, so they can have something to look forward in life. So watch the Father Effect movie for free on YouTube.